How does the church at Life Park in Charleston, South Carolina, creatively plan their sermon series visuals? How can we learn from them and apply any insights into your context? We'll talk about it today. Hey, ministry leader, welcome. If you are enjoying our podcast, please like, subscribe, and share. Do all the things, if you would, to help us get the word out about this free content. Our sponsor for this season of the show is our friends at Outreach.com. You can check them out for all your banners, signs, digital mailers, and more. It's a blessing to have them sponsor the show to make this content available to you absolutely free. Case study today as I'm talking to the church at Life Park about how they creatively plan their sermon series visuals. Life Park is a rapidly growing church in Charleston, South Carolina. They have grown significantly in the past few years with multiple worship services across two venues on their campus. They have some good strategies to plan out their series and the visuals that they use for each. Let's learn from another ministry leader in the trenches at a fast-growing church. Let's jump in. Hey, ministry leader, you can reach more people on social media with short videos created from your sermons. Our friends at Outreach have just released an AI-powered site that creates bite-sized shareable clips from your sermons and then connects directly to your Facebook, Instagram, and X accounts so that you can post the clips extremely fast. You can check it out and get two free clips at digital.outreach.com. That's digital.outreach.com. Hey guys, this week I welcome Steve Holt from the church at Life Park. Steve is the associate pastor of worship at the church and leads the team there to execute multiple services across two venues. He works with our church visuals team to outsource all of their sermon series visuals from the main series design to bumpers and more. Here's my chat with Steve Holt. Welcome, Steve. You know, uh, another South Carolinian in the house just brings me so much joy. Oh, there you go. I love it. I love it. It's so good (laughs) to be here with you, Carl. Man, so I'm in Columbia, South Carolina, and you are in the beautiful city of Charleston. Yes. Mount Pleasant to be exact. Mount Pleasant. Okay. Okay. So we just, uh, you just uh, ventured us to a barbecue place. Me and uh, Steve Dirks on our team. We came down to, uh, to, to visit you guys recently and you took us to this very sweet outdoor barbecue place. It was a home. I would come again. Home team barbecue that just for the barbecue. It's great to see you. Uh, but I mean, I would come just for the barbecue. Uh, it was nice. really good. It's a great place. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. Thank you, man. So, uh, so you are at the church at life park. So kind of give folks a little snapshot of your role there and, uh, how long you've been on staff, that sort of thing. Yeah. I've been at church at life park two and a half years. I am not native or have never been a resident of South Carolina before. So uh, this was a new place for me in ministry. So two and a half years ago, God called us out here and uh, we're at the church of life park. Life park is a, is a fairly young church, only about 14 years old. And uh, it's been great serving here. My wife and I are empty nesters. And so we get the opportunity to serve. I'm the associate pastor for worship here at Life Park and uh, enjoying getting to learn about South Carolina and about the beach, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome. We welcome you with open arms. Thanks. Um, Thanks. (laughs) All right. So you are tasked. uh, We work with your team to uh, create the visual content, some of the visual content for your sermon series and, uh, and that. So why is it that you as the associate pastor of worship, it kind of changes in each church. Sometimes it's the communications person. Sometimes it's the senior pastor. Um, right. How have you, why, why have you been tasked with the visuals for Sunday? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm the one that um, really oversees all aspects of our worship development, any of the resources, any of the things that go into that, the production, 
uh, people at Life Park serve on as a part of the larger worship team. And so um, it it just kind of naturally fit that the senior pastor and I have more consistent discussion ongoing about the aspects of the worship service and about what he's thinking, what he's planning as he's into these series. And so uh, we do want to collaborate. We have a community, full-time communications director that will pull into the process along the way. But just as pastors developing these, he and I are more consistent. So I kind of become the the hub of the communication process. He and I are talking about it. He's communicating his heart to me about the series. And then I can take that take his heart, begin to pull in our, our um, communication director, and then we can begin to lab, uh, collaborate as we develop the series. So yeah. it just was kind of natural yeah. from, a, from a workflow and from a, a, a supervision oversee, oversight yeah. position. Yeah. So uh, you were telling us uh, when we met about the, some of the growth that you guys have seen, uh, love hearing about what what God's doing there. T- tell some folks some of the maybe the the good problems that you guys have been facing lately. Yeah, well, Life Park, God has just blessed Life Park from the very beginning. Like I said, we're only 14 years old. I've only been here the last two and a half years. But the story of Life Park, God's story of Life Park goes all the way back into the 1970s when First Baptist Church of Mount Pleasant um, they were going to build a new worship center. Actually, that's kind of where they're, they were moving. But some men, God placed on some of their elders, uh, heart that they needed to not take that step of building a new worship center. They needed to move out, uh, into North Mount Pleasant, uh, which was not very, uh, not much out here at the time in the 1970s and buy land. And that, uh, vision, uh, from the Lord. And that started a process that now 14 years later, God's doing an amazing work. We, we currently have not yet, the campus plan, uh, is going to, uh, lead us to build a worship center. But right now we have two buildings on the campus and, uh, some, some worship spaces, uh, venues in each mm-hmm. of those buildings. And we're doing on a Sunday morning, we do five services, three in one of those buildings, two in another, in the other building. Um, we have live worship teams in both buildings. They go on simultaneously, and then we stream the sermon from one building to the other. So that creates, we do that three times. So we turn our entire campus over three times on a Sunday morning. And so that, that means parking uh, in and out of buildings. Uh, so currently we're putting through more people on a Sunday morning than our campus was designed to handle in every way. So um, it's some good problems to have, but consistently we're hitting, you know, in some of those services, 95 to a hundred percent or more of capacity uh, mm-hmm. in one or more of those services. So uh, yeah. we're, we're working through that right now and just seeing God, what's next as far as our model and as far as future uh, construction of a new worship center to try to help um, take care of the people that God's bringing to life park. Yeah, I'm excited for you guys in that in those yeah. ventures, man. That's uh, it's really exciting news. Um, all right, so I want to kind of walk through your team's process of how you guys maybe plan a sermon series, uh, walk through the 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 visuals that are created for those series. So, kind of walk me through maybe how far out you guys are planning. Kind of give me a sense of where you are in that. Okay, well, our senior pastor. Um, always, even before my arrival, was really, you know, tried to get a a longer term view of where it was going with his preaching schedule and calendar. But it's only been since we partnered and I came into the process and we started partnering with Church Visuals that we really began to refine and are continuing to refine our process of development. So right now, uh, pastors in a mode of uh, our senior pastors in a mode of uh, maintaining the preaching plan calendar schedule for about six months out uh, in some rough detail, a number of Sundays, um, what, where he thinks he wants to go, where God's leading. And then another, he kind of keeps an eye on the next six months after that to say, okay, what's the burden? Where, where does he see our church and what's the burden for that? So, um, and then the development process as we get closer, we're, we're in a series now. We're headed toward a series. So the process for us works through that for the next series. 
um, he's going to develop a one page synopsis or outline of the series. And it's going to have an outline of the general theme and topic, some some brainstorming in his mind about the title and the direction. He's going to have some key scriptures that he uses in there. And then he's going to write two or just two or three paragraphs, short paragraphs about the burden that he's feeling. Why? Why? Is he feeling like this is something that our people need to hear, that he needs to preach that? He'll give that to me, and then we'll call a meeting between me about six weeks out uh, from the series, uh, hopefully a little farther than that. We're trying to push that back, but at least six, seven weeks out, he'll call a meeting. I'll pull in our comm director, and we'll sit, and he'll share his heart. He'll share his his uh, passion for this is uh, give some any any detail that he has already uh, in place. And then we'll begin to brainstorm refining the title, subtitle. Um, what are some ideas for some graphics? What do we want this to feel like? Um, those kind of things. Uh, so that's that gets us to that meeting. Our comm director, who is better. I, I'm not a graphic d- d- person. She has a great eye for graphics. So she'll go and start just kind of looking around at what at what's out there that's been done before. She'll pull some ideas together, shoot them to me, shoot them to our pastor and say, hey, any of these directions, we're not looking for a specific graphic. We're looking for theming, coloring, direction ideas. And then we'll kind of go, yes, yes, no, no, no. Then at that point, I'll contact Church Visuals. I'll work with Steve and I'll send him that one page synopsis share any ideas that we have in the development. And then he begins from there working uh, with that. So I've worked in churches and a lot of other churches. Uh, I I mean, they're most of them are last last minute or not as planned out as, as you guys. So I love seeing that, but sometimes, okay, the rough can be put out there six to 12 months, but sometimes always we're just crunch and crunch and crunch until the rubber meets the road and we're still two weeks out, a week out. So how do you prevent that crunch from happening? It starts with our senior pastor, and this is a new rhythm for him. And so as he and I meet regularly, he's always saying, I'm I'm working on it. I'm I'm working because he has seen the impact that quality visuals can have in in the process. And it's not just what happens in the sermon or on the screens on Sunday morning. This process has an impact on the entire service because the farther we can get our minds out and the more we can let the Holy Spirit lead us out those weeks, he's seen the difference in all of my planning. So it's not just even the development of the visuals. The farther he's pushing to be out and more detailed, we're always open to changes. We're, we're, we're going right. to hold that open handed. But of course. he's he's seen the difference. So it starts with him and having the vision. And then uh, he's given me permission to say, hey, pastor, we're X number of weeks out. Do you have that synopsis for me? Uh, mm-hmm. Where are you going with this? And so he relies on me to prompt him for that. And then he's just really good to go. I'll have that for you. And and if I give him, you know, I'll give him a few days. He'll have it for me. We'll call that meeting. And that just gets the ball rolling. And I think he's found that it gets it rolling for him, too, earlier. Uh, it, mm-hmm. it, it gets him praying through those things earlier, planning earlier. And so, yes, it helps. We have to have that time frame in the development of visuals. But we've only we've had to work toward that because even right. if Steve were on this call, he'd tell you, you know, I, I wanted to tell Pastor because we started with Pastor, I need four weeks. And we were down to three <laughs> and then it was two. And so Steve was always going, hey, we'll get it done. You know, we'll make it happen. But so then I backed it up and said, OK, can we back up to six? Because then maybe we'll get it at five and we'll move it through there. So it's just been right, a process. Right. But his yeah. heart in this is what he sees happening because we're going to take that diligence to, to push ourselves um, to do it. So let's jump to that. What You mentioned that your pastor has seen the impact of quality visuals. What impact has that been that you have seen, that he has seen, that your church has seen? Yeah. I, you know, great visuals won't make a a, a bad sermon good or a, or a, or a great, a bad series uh, or a, not a well thought out series good, but 
good visuals can make a, a good series memorable. And it can really, uh, it can, it, we've seen it when, when those visuals are sharp, when they're clear, when they're on point. Um, we've seen that it helps our congregation in the midst of a, of a, of a, of a one hour worship service focus at the right time, bring focus to what we're talking about, bring mm-hmm. clarity from the spoken word to the, to the, to the printed word where it, it matches those two things. Um, and then, and then just in, uh, the excellence of well done visuals, um, withhold uh, matches what we're striving to do here. Um, and, and we're trying to do everything to the best of our ability in an excellent manner, not according to what somebody else says is the bar, but what we want to do, which is our very best. So we, we, we value biblical, non-distracting excellence. So we, we talked about that using that qualifier a lot. And so we think with visuals, you can have, you know, you can have things in visuals that are distracting, that don't, that don't serve the the theme that don't have any they're just cool right. we, we want to minimize those things uh and and maximize the clarity and and helping our people focus and what are you remembering when you walk out the door does that right. does the visual help you recall the scripture and then help you recall what the application and the next step that you were that you were offered I think you bring up several good points there. Uh, one, visuals are a tool. They're not the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah. So the, it's not the visuals that are going to do the saving, but there are tools for people to remember the gospel, for you yeah. to use to visually communicate the message that you're trying to uh, to deliver. Um, so yeah. good points there. Um, all right. Walk me through maybe for another ministry leader, what specific deliverables or visuals do you guys create for a sermon series? What's your kind of set list of things? Yeah, we, we have a pretty standard list that we want a title graphic uh, that we can use across multiple platforms, social media platforms uh, that, that matches well uh, color wise and and uh, always in our worship centers. So we want that title graphic. We want a teaching graphic that's going to match that, that's going to be compatible with that, bring interest, but not be too cluttered, that we can deliver the scripture passages. We can display those. So a teaching slide comes with each that we want that every time. Uh, we want the um, the social media deliverables. We, we've just recently started refining those to where our Com director doesn't have to create those different sizes. We can, they just come already done and she can quickly get them out into Insta and, and Facebook and other kind of social media email graphics. And then we do a sermon bumper. Um, that, that helps us with transitions in worship. It helps us with a focus in worship of where we're going, um, coming out of and where we're heading into with the sermon. And so there were, there are logistical and, and then, uh, and thematic things that that sermon bumper helps us with. And we usually uh, sometimes a lot of sermon bumpers are like 15 to 30 seconds. We actually need a little bit longer one from a logistical standpoint to help us with the transition, uh, the live stream between two buildings. We use that sermon bumper to help us make some cleaner transition. Mm. So I know in working with you guys over the years that the, the we've refined the process with you guys in that we don't want the sermon bumper to uh, steal the thunder of of Chad, right. your pastor, uh, yeah. and to to be a little bit simpler. Um, and so I love the fact that as we work together, we can learn your culture. And I want to encourage that to ministry leaders that if you work with a, a group like us or or anybody, to look for people that will learn your culture and and learn about right. wh- how how to deliver that to your church and learn your style and kind of your, your vibe. So how how have you seen that be the case? Yeah, I think, I think as we come back, we've, we've kind of, even with, even with Steve and working with you guys, we, we used to um, go right from that submission of synopsis and some graphic ideas to a couple of really, you all would develop a couple of comps that were, you know, had invested time in. Well, we found that, that we needed another step in there. And so now, but, but that's the quality of just learning the process and you guys working with us. So now we have a step that 
he sends the ideas they're going to possibly go with first. Here's uh, some ideas of background music. Here's some ideas of some graphic direction. Here's some ideas of the video content that we might use. And then we're able to say, no, 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 no. In fact, the current series we're doing was one we went back and the first things that got sent, you hadn't invested tons of time, but that was the first direction for y'all. We saved tons of time by by them sending that and going and just knowing, no, that's not, that's not them. So right. the, the more we do that, the farther we go, the more we're getting it right. Uh, y'all, yeah. y'all are getting it right. Uh, and that, uh, that helps everybody all around. It, it, helps, yeah. it helps keep the cost down for you guys so that yeah. there's not a, 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 it helps keep the time down because right. uh, we're all not going, at, you know, in several different directions that we don't need to. So sometimes that's a good note for ministry leaders too. Sometimes a no or a not this is as just as valuable as all of this is out of the park. Like sometimes having that direction and being clear is, uh, is super important. Um, all right. So one, one thing I'm focusing on, on this season of of the podcast is that, uh, last season really focused on ready-made media, pre-done stuff, uh, which has its place. We create a lot of it. We, we want folks to use it. Yes. But you guys have chosen to kind of do a little bit of both. Um, you, I'm sure you've taken some ready-made stuff here and there for announcement slides and stuff we like have. that, but you guys have yep. chosen to invest a little bit more in the sermon series package. So why is that investment worth it? Why do you choose custom over just taking something off the shelf? Yeah. So I will say we, we have no idea because we're not planning in hard times a full year in advance. So we don't know how many lengthy. So what we've chosen to do is a hybrid of the two. We, if we're going to have a a sermon series, that's going to be three weeks or more, we have a tendency to lean into doing a custom project. And I'll I'll say why in a minute, if we have three weeks or less, one week and a one off or a two week emphasis, we have a tendency either create it in house or more often we'll turn to ready-made media graphics and a lot of it from church visuals. Um, that actually becomes challenging in itself because our pastor really values what he, what he, his term is about his, our teaching and preaching brand promise. And so we use ready-made visuals, but the challenge for us is if you have a longer series, the ready-made visuals aren't always as adaptable week in and week out and the people get bored, bored with them. And, and so the same the same visual that wasn't quite clear enough that week. It, it was kind of on topic, but it was, it was clear. It wasn't, we're either fitting to that visual uh, or it doesn't mm-hmm. fit us exactly. So mm-hmm. the custom projects allows a better context for us, a better clarity. It matches the language and the direction exactly that our pastor's going. And, um, Quite honestly, it just has more impact, I think, um, and gives us more control over every aspect of that from the um, if you've got a, a voiceover on that. We don't like uh, sometimes I've seen and I've been in situations where churches get into a pattern of if on their sermon bumpers. It's all text every time. And so your people just reading and, and they begin to look the same and feel the same and people check out. So. Custom gives us the ability to change it up. We, we're going to do, and when we do a voiceover or or that whatever's displayed on on the screen during a bumper or or the or the text, it matches and and sets and sets up the question so that it, it creates interest. And so that's part of what we really try to do in developing those, not only the the graphics but the bumper. We want to ask questions. We want to set up the dilemma so that when our pastor comes and opens the word, we let the word answer the, the question. Yeah, good. good so so we, we just we just think it fits our context better and has and and helped us. Also, the red like my point earlier, the red made graphics are great if you're on a really short timetable mm-hmm. and your your planning is not very far in advance. It's a great thing to move into. I, I would advocate for, for, for churches stepping into those ready-made graphics, especially from professional companies that are doing it week in and week out in high quality ways. But 
the, the planning process that has to go in place and you have to push and stretch and challenge yourself to do the custom raises everybody's game of creativity and intentionality in what you're doing, not just a better, more clear visual. So the, the, the worship services that are developed, the scriptures that are chosen, the songs that we're singing, the transition moments that we have in there all becomes and begins to have much more intentional and memorable feel just because we backed our process up because we had to do that to get the, the custom made media that would serve it well. Good. Um, yeah, I, I like this theme of it's worth the investment. And I'm not just talking about time and yeah. you aren't either. It's worth the investment no. to plan ahead. It's worth the investment to have the staff in place. It's worth the time of the team to uh, dig in and talk about it. it it's worth all those uh, investments. So let's talk about the impact. What are some of the uh, maybe your favorite series that you've done, maybe some of the life change stories that you guys have seen hit on the impact that you've seen. Yeah, I. Well, some of our favorite, let's, let's just talk about the current series we're doing now that you all developed with us. Um, it's called Real Talk and uh, real people, real problems, real solutions. Now, one of the things that helps us realize the impact from all of these aspects of what happens in the worship service that I do want to mention that I think I haven't been at a church before that has done this so faithfully, but our pastor weekly um, invites church members uh, and they sign up to do this into a weekly Zoom call to give specifically to give feedback on the sermon and uh, two to three people every week. Uh, they, they, his, his assistant puts out a sign up sheet and they sign up to do a Zoom call with him. And it's some very specific questions. And so, uh, did the title pique your interest? Um, intro, did it make you want to learn more about the topic? And this is all has an impact on the visuals. Did, is the title memorable? Did it, did it stand out? Did you get it? Do you remember what it is? Uh, scripture, was it consistent with the title, with the intro? Did the teaching answer the questions that the visual set up or that we did through there? Did the speaker fulfill the promise? So the feedback that comes through those in mm -hmm. all aspects is, is amazing. So I'll get life change. Um, our pastor's sermon this last week was on anger. Um, at real talk. And so the, one of the people on the, on the zoom call just yesterday, um, one of our faithful church members said, you know what? Uh, number one, I like the title. Did the title pique your interest? Yes, because she deals a lot with people that feel like church is fake. Church gives you uh, non-realistic answers. You just get stuff to cover up your things. You're not dealing with real people and real issues. That's all somewhere else. So mm -hmm. the title piqued her in interest. And then she said, you know what? I came in and she's a faithful church member. She goes, I came in thinking all anger is is bad. And, and so I need to work to eliminate all anger from my life. And as a result of the sermon and the things that are happening and what what captured her about this, her her next steps are I realize now I'm not there is anger that is righteous anger. And I need to I'm not getting rid of that. I need to use it correctly in my life. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. just some answered prayers through there. And then um, a few weeks ago, I'll give you one more example. Um, we had a, a, a man that was new in our church, a family that was new in our church. He had been a lifelong uh, educator, had got into the teaching early and now was really feeling restless in, in his profession. He's administrator in school systems and our pastor, the sermon that day was, um, what's next? What's God, what's God's next for you? And immediately um, through the, you know, was captured by the visual was, was, was drawn into the sermon. And that was, that was just a few weeks ago. That was mid March. And today we didn't have this thing in place, but he wrote in, uh, he gave feedback and, and he caught the pastor afterwards. And he's like, um, I don't know what's next, but I think it's has to do with ministry. And, and, and I think God's calling me out of that, but I know nothing about ministry. I don't know what to do. And so our pastor worked and we, 
Within a period of two weeks, he developed a 90 day internship, paid internship at Life Park for this man who's in his late 40s, totally different career. And he's spending the next 90 days um, getting an overview and a depth and an insight into ministry that he feels like God wants to use him in ministry. And and the, the, the current outlets of year long internships or things like that. So. Some of those things are what we see coming out of the worship services that these visuals are are helping to put those questions in your mind. Yeah, that's great. All right. As we land this, uh, what advice would you give? We've hit on this a little bit, but what what advice would you give other ministry leaders uh, enhancing their their visuals? Uh, Does it make an impact? I think we've answered that question or uh, maybe just in general. What advice would you would you give them? Is it worth it? Yeah. So I would I would have a couple of things. First of all, I was going to say a while ago that from an investment of staff, uh, even though we're a larger church, we have lots of people coming. We 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 could go out and potentially try to hire a full time uh, video producer uh, or graphic designers, those kind of things. We could do that. But to get the quality and expertise faithfully week in and week out, it would cost us a whole lot more money than we're paying church visuals to get the expertise and and the buy in of a team like yours. So I would say, first of all, if you're on a church on a budget, I I would say pay attention to your visual visuals. Um, Where are you getting them and and make them as clear and connected to what you're saying as possible? Make sure you're you're looking at them. I'd say and and. A lot of you, if you're not spending any money on visuals or buying packages out there, that's a way to start. But there are many companies that the the custom media package on church visuals invest in that that as a first step, because those are those are tried and true things that are working in churches and churches that y'all have developed for other churches. So I'd say take that step. I'd say take advantage of finding people like you, like Steve Dirks, like others probably on your team that are professionals. And if nothing else, reach out and have a dialogue about how can you what's your next step in improving your me- media? How Tell them what you're currently doing. And, you know, Steve is a pro presenter professional. He's, you know, works with there. There's all kinds of expertise that all it takes is a phone call. And, and, and at least an initial connection. Don't be afraid to do that. Stretch and challenge. I'd say it goes back to our earlier point. I'd say my advice is stretch and challenge your team. If you're in the worship area, if you're a comm director, if you're a production director, just, just raise the value of what this could bring and, and, and call some people up and ask for a bigger buy-in from the rest of the team to move toward more high quality, more impactful, uh, visuals. Um, then I would say if you're if you're ready, you go, man, this all sounds really, really good. My, our first step was to budget for a one off custom project. Mm-hmm. And we reached out to church visuals and say, look, OK, it, it, the price tag, it looks like, oh, my gosh, we're going to spend that money on one on one series. Well, just contrast it with hiring that person out uh, to do that and not maybe yeah, having the really expertise. Really two people, your so, designer and yeah, your video. It, it, exactly. So mm-hmm. so it, it, it looks like it may look like a lot of money to you, but take the, take the step of faith and do one custom project. Walk through the process with your team. Walk through the process with a company like Church Visuals or another of the great companies that are out there mm-hmm. and see the difference that not only the visuals make in the final product, but also what happened along the way in the process with the connection on your team, with the intentionality in the development, all of those things, then evaluate. And if you see that God used that in great ways, take a step of faith and look at and go, you may think, I thought early on, gosh, I really have to refine. How many series are you doing next year, Pastor? Is it five or is it six? Or is it three? Or what is it? Mm-hmm. You, it doesn't have to be. Most companies that are working in this space are so, so super flexible. So mm-hmm. just step of faith and go, I think we may do this. I'm not quite sure. If you do a contract like like I learned, then it lowers the cost per project and it, and it helps keep things in the pipeline and keeps that thinking going. So I'd say the, the final step for me is I encourage you, look, if you've, if you've done some of these steps, take a leap of faith. And and see what God might do by investing some resources in well done visuals um, along the way. 
Man, one thing I really like, and, and you guys are close. We've gotten to, uh, I've gotten to go down there a couple of times and hang out with you guys. Um, but we, we serve ministry leaders all over. One thing I, I, I love is that we can be virtual. We can be across the country. Uh, in this case, a couple hours down the road. But but we still work. I mean, we just met a few weeks ago in That's person, right. although we've been working yeah. together for uh, with your church for several years. Yeah. Um, but that but that we are in the trenches together. Uh, yeah. We're in ministry. We are. Our, our whole team is is, uh, you know, former church staff members been been, you know, in, in positions at churches, know kind of the timelines, know what it's like to. Uh, to rush in certain places and plan in certain places. Um, and you guys are, are on the front lines in the, uh, you know, week in and week out. And so it's a joy to serve guys like you and your team, uh, even, you know, in different parts of the state, different parts of the country, yeah. knowing that the gospel is being advanced, that the kingdom is being uh, advanced. And so, man, thank you for that, uh, for you guys. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, whether ministry leaders use a, a company like us or not, whether you guys use us or not, I, I love the fact that um, we're we're cheering each other on. We want to see the best in each other, and we want to see yeah. we're we're on it. We're in a battle right now, absolutely. Um, that to see your church growing and thriving is is a, just a joy to see. So, man, thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. And, and let me just say, I, I, I appreciate, I know, I know this is uh, not necessarily always wanting to be a commercial, but I, you know, working with, with Steve week in and week out, you're talking about the, the video conferencing. Uh, one of the, you know, I've just so many times as you communicate, you think, man, a company's not here close. I need the flesh and blood. Steve's always like, Hey, let's hop on a quick call and a video call. And, and just so easy to collaborate with and, and pull ideas from and talk through things. Um, I, I think if people took the, the step to make that first thing, they'd see this process can, is doable. Uh, no yeah. matter what size your church is, the, the process is doable and you can work your way into this in a great way. And, um, it, and, and, kingdom minded. I think that's, that's an important thing. Um, you know, I know Steve, I, I'm sure you are as well, but talking to Steve all the time, um, he's in his church week in and week out. He's running pro presenter. He's developing graphics. He's, he's, he's designing and setting up all those things. So he's in the trenches. So when I talk to him, I don't feel like I'm talking to a company. I feel like I'm talking to a guy, a fellow person that's like next door going, I'm doing this too. How can I help? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate uh, everything that you guys are, are doing at, at Life Park and and just your your friendship and you guys partnership. Just really appreciate it. So thanks for hey, the time. Thanks, today, Carl. Man. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, my friend. Hey, ministry leader. Did you know that with our ready made media library, you don't have to have a subscription. You can purchase media a la carte first if you need. Choose from 40,000 plus pre-made graphics and videos for your church. All at churchvisuals.com and click on ready-made. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more free training for your church or ministry. As we wrap this week, here's your church visuals tip of the week. Using custom visuals, can allow the content to belong to you. If you create stuff in-house, or if you have it in the contract with an outsource team, those visuals are yours. So you can use them for other things, or you can bless other churches. With ready-made media, thousands of churches around the world are using the same content. Now, sometimes that doesn't matter, but there are times when you want that content to belong to you and custom visuals allows you to do that. If you want to reach the people that you want to reach for Jesus, your visuals matter. I'll see you next week. Your Visuals Matter has been a podcast presentation of Church Visuals. Executive produced by Carl Barnhill, edited by AJ Schubert, title and show graphics by Angie Lomas. For more resources to help you visually communicate the gospel, visit churchvisuals.com.